The fifth video on MATLAB looks at step responses coming from transfer functions. Previous videos have looked at how we enter Laplace transforms and transfer functions into MATLAB and also how we can create closed loop transfer functions. So this video is going to look at how we can get the corresponding step responses for the transfer functions we've entered. Now those transfer functions could be open loop or closed loop, it doesn't really matter at this point. In particular, we're going to look at the function step.m and ask how do we get it to produce a figure or a numerical output? Can we control the end time for which the step response is calculated? Can we control the intervals at which the outputs are computed because MATLAB will calculate the outputs only at specified times? And can we overlay many responses at once? So for example, we could compare open loop and closed loop behavior or something similar. This is the system we've got then. So we're assuming that we've got a G of S and we're feeding into the G of S a step signal and we're interested in the corresponding output. Now the control toolbox will do this numerically, not analytically. And that's important because it, remem it means in some sense the results are approximate, although they'll be accurate to many decimal places. Now there's two options you can do in MATLAB. You can actually get the impulse response, which is the Laplace inverse of G of S, or you can get the step response, which is the Laplace inverse of G of S over S. Now it's only the latter of these that we're interested in, because generally speaking, in a control syllabus, you're not going to bother with impulse responses. You're going to focus on step responses. As it happens, all the results for impulse responses in terms of use of MATLAB are almost the same. So you could work those out yourself if you needed to. Now, as an aside, if you did want an analytic solution, go and have a look at the function ilaplace.m, but that's not covered in this video. Okay. So the question we want to ask is, how do we get a figure for the step response using MATLAB? OK, so we're going to use step.m, and there's a number of different options. So if we start at the top, if we want to generate a figure with an automated end time, which means we're going to allow MATLAB to choose the end time for us. And it will do that by looking at the transfer function and making an estimate of how long is needed to show the principal dynamics. Then you just do something like step brackets G or step G comma M. And the difference is step G will show the step response for G. Step G comma M will show the step responses for G and M and it will overlay them together. Or indeed, you could do step G comma M comma K and so on. However, let's assume you know what end time you're interested in and therefore you want to control the plot to some extent. Well, this is easy. If you see the red box at the bottom, you just add this end time as a final input argument. So you'll see you can write step G comma T or step g comma m comma t. Now as long as the last argument is a number, a positive number, then MATLAB knows you mean this as the end time. Now if you've got several Laplace transforms in this step command, like step g comma m comma t, and you're not sure which plot goes with which transfer function, the easy way to control this is to use legend as a second statement and it will tell you which is which. So what we'll do is we'll go to MATLAB and we'll illustrate. Right, so first of all, let's uh, clean this window up so we can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to enter some transfer functions. Now, these are the same transfer functions we've had on previous slides, so we're not too worried about what they are, but I've just put them in. So first command, you said if I just do step G, so there you are, you see I've put step G, what's it put in the figure at the bottom here? You can see it's plotted the step response as expected. And you know it's a step response because it, by default it will put that title there for you, step response. You can overlay that if you want. And you'll notice it's defaulted the time scale as one and a half seconds. What happens then if we do step g comma m? So now I'm going to do two transfer functions together. And you notice we have a curve here which has two plots on it. One corresponds to g, one corresponds to m. You'll notice the end time has changed, it's now three, because MATLAB said, given you you've want two transfer functions, I'm going to choose the most appropriate end time that I think. I can do three transfer functions if I want. 
So there you see step g, comma, m, comma, k, and I've now got three figures altogether, and the end time has moved to 18. What if I want to control the end time? So you'll see the next line, step g, comma, 20. That will set the end time to be 20, and it will do only g. So you can see that's not a very wise end time for this particular transfer function, but the end time is set to 20, as you expect. Or I could do step g, comma, m, comma, 4, which will do g and m together and put an end time of 4. And there you go. Now, if I don't know which plot is which, you'll see I said add this legend command. So I've put legend g, comma, m. And what I've done is I've set the first value in the step command. So let's have a look at that. The first value is the g. That corresponds to the first value in the legend command. And the second value in the step command corresponds to the second thing in the legend command. So if we try that, there you go. You'll see it's come up with um, a legend box. So I'll, let's sketch that there. There's the legend box. And it said the G is in blue and the M is in green. So you know which is which. What happens then if I want to get some numerical numbers out? So I don't, I'm not interested in the plots, not yet anyway, but I actually want to calculate the values. Well, there's different options. So for example, I can put y equals step g, and it will just calculate the y at the end time and with the spacing that it thinks best. Or I can put square brackets y comma t equals step g, and it will calculate the outputs and the corresponding times at which it's calculated those outputs. And often you want both pieces of data. So usually the second line is better. But the key thing is here, because I've only got brackets g as an input, MATLAB will select the end time and the spacing. What happens if I want to dictate the end time? Well, exactly as when I had the figure, I use the same syntax, y equals step, and then I put brackets g comma t. So I put the end time in, or square brackets y comma t t equals step g comma t. So now I'm collecting the outputs, collecting the times at which those outputs were calculated, and I'm dictating the end time to MATLAB by putting it in as an input. There's one further thing I can do. I could actually dictate not only the end time, but the spacing at which the output is calculated. So what you do is you use this command over here. OK, so I I create a vector and it has to be equispaced. So you see a start value of A, a spacing of B and a final value of C. So that's A colon B colon C. And I put that in as the final argument in step. And MATLAB now knows that's the times at which you want the output calculated. And obviously, if I use this command here, you should find that TT matches T space. So I've now got the output and the corresponding times. So again, let's um, go to MATLAB and demonstrate this. OK, so you'll see I've got y equals step g is a possibility. Now, you'll see it's produced, if I scan down this window, lots and lots of different values of y for me there. How many is it produced? I don't know, but I can go who's y. And there you can see 115 values. You might think um, that's a bit arbitrary. I'm just going to clean the figure so we can see that the fig nothing's happening with the figure. So MATLAB's not updating the figure. So when I run the next command, you'll see that's the case. If I want to get the times as well, so here I can go y, comma, tt equals step g. So if I run that, and what do you notice? You'll see it's produced all the outputs and all the times, lots and lots of vectors. And if I go whose y tt, you see there you are, both 115 long. So I've got the outputs and the corresponding times. If I want to dictate the end time, as before, I can put y equals step g comma 1. And there you go. And you'll see the end time. Oh, sorry, I've just calculated the y there. Um, so that um, you can't see the end time was 1. But if I do the next one, y comma tt equals step g comma 1, then you'll notice that the second value, which is the time, the final value is 1. And there's a more embellished example here, so you can see. What if I want to put in the spacing? So you'll see on line 16, I've said y comma tt equals step g, and I've put 0, 
colon point two, colon two. So it only wants the values calculated at the times 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and so on. Let's try that one. And what can you see? The time spacing exactly as I expected. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So it's spacings of 0 0.2. And if you look at the output, it's only calculated the outputs at those times. So now, if I do who's, you'll see why in TT there's only 11 values because I've only asked for 11 values. OK, to finish off now, what if I want to overlay some responses? So we know we can control the operation of step. We can say what times we want things calculated. Um, but what if we want to compare different systems? An obvious example would be if we wanted to compare closed loop outputs with different compensators. So we could decide which compensator was best. So we've got a little bit of code here so you can see how that might be done. So first of all, you'll see the first line GC1 equals feedback G times 1 comma 1. That's a bit like doing a feedback loop with a compensator of 1 because I've done G times 1. GC2 equals feedback G times 2 and that's a bit like doing a compensator with K equals 2. What have I done next? I've said let's calculate the step response for the closed loop with K equals 1 and the key point to notice here is I've said I'm going to calculate it at times 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9 and so on. So I've said the spacing of 0 0.3 with an end time of 3. However, the other closed loop, I've said I'm going to calculate this at times 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and so on. Now clearly this is just for illustration. In general you wouldn't be doing different time instances if you're doing a comparison but we're trying to demonstrate what you can do with MATLAB very easily. And now, in order to overlay these, we just use the plot command. So you see plot time 1 against y1, that's the response of the feedback with k equals 1, and you'll see what I've said here, I want red crosses. And then time 2 against output 2, and here I want blue circles. And just to clarify, so I know which plot is which when I'm looking at it, I've used a legend command. I've said the first plot corresponds to k equals 1. The second plot corresponds to k equals 2. So let's look at this now on our MATLAB window. So if I scroll down to the bottom, I've got those commands there. So you'll see these six commands are exactly those six we've just shown. So I dump those across to the window. And now you look at the figure. What can you see? You can see k equals 1, red crosses. And what's the time spacing? It's 0 0.3. If you look carefully, you'll see those red crosses have a time spacing of 0 0.3. The blue circles correspond to k equals 2. You'll see the spacing for those is 0 0.2. And you will also notice the blue circles finish at 2 seconds, which is what I asked, whereas the red crosses finish at 3 seconds, which is what I asked. So you've got very good control of what this plot is doing. So in conclusion, students should know how to use MATLAB to generate and display step responses. You can use the automated end time and spacing provided by MATLAB or select these for yourself. And you should also be aware that the syntax used with step is critical to determining what the file does. So make sure you know what you want and use the corresponding syntax. You will also have noticed that I've been storing commands in a script file because it makes it very easy to reuse or to dump whole sequences of code with one press of a button and that makes it much, much faster.